Good morning, I'm Venus from Heart's Desire by Venus and today I'm going to show you how to take your milk jug, if you've got one like this, into a mini album or a junk journal cover. Um, it's got a little peekable boo hole on both sides and it's got this little butterfly that's dangling in there. Uh, when I put the signature in, you can see that makes a cute little uh, journal. It is a five by four with a one inch spine here and I put some elastic in here so it's a removable signature. But I thought today I'd show you how I did that. Um, so as you can see on here, uh, let's see if I can pick it up. There it is. Uh, what inspired me was this circle that is on two sides of my milk jug. There you go, you can see it. And that's what I use to make this peekaboo window. Um, obviously you can't really use this part or this part, but I thought this would be pretty cool to use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it apart and then I'll come back on screen and show you what it looks like as I have cut that. Okay, so I'm back. So now you can see here, I've basically, Hmm, get this in the camera. There we go. I have cut around here, so I've taken basically the two sides off with the, uh, I had the window in there. So here we go. I'm trying to show you this again. Uh, so then this is the piece that I'm left with. Not very straight. Yeah, I know. Um, so I'm just going to, I washed it. Obviously, wash your jug. I'm going to just dry it off here. And now is the time. You can see here what I did is I really trimmed it down for this one. But I wanted to get the piece out bigger than I need so that you could figure out where to, to cut it. Now, you can see the circles here. And I don't know if you can see in the middle. There you can a little bit. There is a natural line there. That is what I used for the middle of, um, to, to measure for the middle of my spine, because obviously these circles are evenly spaced in there. So I really did this for me. So what I did is I did a half inch on either side of that line. And I'm actually just going to stick it in my scoreboard here. Uh, before I even cut anything, I'm just going to score on either side of that line so that you know where you're going. And this is just, it's going to barely show up. I'm just going to score it a couple of times, a half inch on either side of the line. And that is more for me just to know where I'm going to be cutting eventually. Let's see, I'm just... Ever so slightly, you can see the lines in there now. That's just to give me an idea of where I'm going. And so basically, I'm just going to fold those over on that score line. And really just burnish those so that you now have your one inch spine before I cut the rest of the shape off. Okay. So now you can see, well, that wasn't very straight, was it? Straighten that out there. All right. So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to measure across uh, how long I want my journal to be. So this one in particular, um, in total, it was... Well, it looks like five and three quarter, but I'm going to make this one six, uh, nine across, sorry. I'm going to make it nine by, this one is five. So nine by five. And uh, I will be back once I've cut that up to show you what it looks like. All right, I'm back. So now I have my piece. That is a nine by five. I've got my score, my line in the middle, my two score marks for the spine. So I'm going to bring this up to the camera. 
So this circle here, um, again, that is what I used for my peekaboo. Now you could cut this out by hand if you want. I happen to have a nesting die that fits perfectly in here to cut that out. So that's the circle that I cut out. So I'm going to cut that out and uh, I'll be back. Now you also don't have to cut that out. You can just leave it if you wanted. It would make a nice focal point anyways, but I'm going to cut it out and then I'll be back. All right, so I have cut out the circles. There they are. Um, and I'm going to, this is going to be my front because I just want that little space in the bottom here so I could put a label or something, label plate or book plate in there. So now I've got, you can see your shape is taking place. Um, now, what I did for this one is, is open it up. In the inside, I put some double-sided paper. Um, I initially, I glued it and then when the glue was dry, I went around and stitched because I found the glue I was using, it wasn't making a, a good hold all the time and I didn't want it to eventually peel off. Now I could have probably played with other glues to get a better um, adhesion, but I just decided I'll stitch it. And I, my machine is pretty good for that. I, it's a, a quilting machine, but it will still do this, um, just slow and steady. And I did adjusted my stitching. But again, you do not have to stitch this. If you have a good glue, put it on and just let it dry and check. When you go like this, if it peels off, then put more glue or stitch it. But for me, I also wanted that look of the stitching around. So, um, I'm just going to get some paper here. I'm just going to get a piece of paper to go on the inside and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just got a piece of, from my stash, it's a two-sided uh, piece of cardstock. I chose to do um, on here a thicker one just for the cover. So this is, I think this one's a 90 pound. Um, so, and I know it's not a full page, it's just out of my my stash. But what I thought is, is this will work. I, I kind of like the coloring of it. So all I did, because for those of you who have noticed, I, I'm not a big person for measuring. I usually don't get it right. So all I have done is folded them there and I've laid the, get my head out of the way, I have just laid the spine up here and I'm just tracing around the cover. my pencil and then I'm going to do the same on the other side because that's going to be cut out so I'm going to do the same thing for the back side I'm just going to lie the spine up to where I want it and trace trace around Okay, so I'm just going to cut these pieces out and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've cut my two pieces out and now I've decided I like this one for my, my cover better. Um, but in order to get the circle in the right spot, basically I just, I do the same thing. I line up where my cover is going to be and I'm just going to do a slight pencil mark there. I'm going to do the same thing on here because then at least when I put my um, nesting die down I have an idea of where it is supposed to be and the pencil mark will, you can erase it or I usually end up covering it up with um, distressing ink. So I'm going to go and cut these two out with my nesting die and I'll be back. Okay, so you can see 
now once I've cut put these in they fit perfectly in there and it's just gives it that frosting over which I think is kind of cool there we zoomed in so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to distress these use my distressing ink and distress around the edges before you stitch it and I'm going to do both sides because don't forget it's two-sided so you're going to stitch it on but the other side will be showing as well so I'm just going to quickly do that you can see the potential for this I've already my brain is going I'm already thinking oh these would make some uh, cute peekaboo cards as well if you wanted to make or tags uh, for your journals out of the milk jugs as well um, the possibilities are endless on this I may do a video later on uh, some tags I think and peekaboo tag out of that would be awesome so just doing this roughly around and this is just this paper I had in my stash I'm not actually sure um, which line this is I'll look at it and uh, try and put it in the uh, link below as to who it is actually by it is this one's a B paper so not sure anyways I'm, I'll figure it out later and I'll post it down there so with this like you can see it just lines up perfectly um, so even though I am stitching it I am still putting glue down for another reason to help seal it but also to hold it into place while um, I'm stitching I don't want it to move on me and sometimes that will so I'm just gonna put a small amount of clear glue you don't want it to be white because it'll show and this stuff is very clear um, and this will just hold it so um, I try and line up the circle because it doesn't really matter if it's sticking over your paper on the side I think that adds to it as well but you can always trim your paper back but if your circle is not lined up it's gonna look kind of funny so I'm just gonna lay that on and I'm just gonna burnish it and I'm gonna do the same for the other side because that one's gonna go like that so again just a touch of glue and I mean you could stitch this on the do it the reverse and have your paper on the outside and the frosting paper part on the inside but I just kind of like the looks of this myself this way so that's why I'm doing it just line up the circle there and I'm just gonna burnish it down okay so so once this is dry I am going to go and stitch it on so I'm going to do that I'm going to let dry stitch it on and then I'll be back so I am back and uh as you can see I have got my cover stitched on um, I stitched the outsides and I double stitched around the circles I just liked the look it gives me so now we're going to put the spine uh, deal with the spine here um, I wanted it so that I could just have a little small signature going in there so basically all I did as I took my crocodile and I'm just going to punch it right on that middle line you can see there I just cut a hole or punched a hole I should say with my crocodile perfect and now I'm just going to put set in two eyelets um, small eyelets that way it's just secured on that spine yeah, I think it just looks cute 
So I'm going to set my eyelet. Not punch a hole, set an eyelet. There we go. Okay, so now you can see I've got that there. So then what I did with this one is I just strung a piece of flat white elastic. I mean, you could put whatever kind you want. I just liked the flat. And you see I've done it in the back here. Now for my butterfly, my floating butterfly on this one, basically before I glued the covers on, I did a string and... Uh, Put it between two pieces of the exact same butterfly strung it in when i stitched this one i've chose that i'm showing you i've chose to leave it open because i've got some nice paper you can see there for my signature to go inside so that way i was thinking you can see it so you could decorate it however you want um but I just thought this was perfect. So I'm just going to thread some elastic through there and tie it on. And then all I did is I made a little signature um, for it. I just did a three, three hole pamphlet stitch tie in the middle. And I've just got a little pocket. I got a little envelope, but just using basically up uh, some pieces that I've had left over. Made a little envelope there. Um, some of these papers, like this one, I know this one's from uh, Line Dot Arrow. I think these ones are from uh, Love Junk Journals. Um, I'll put links below for any of the pieces that I can remember here. But uh, yeah, and then it's just on this one, you just slide it in there. This will be the signature for the other one, but you'll get the idea. Slide your signature in. And there you go, you've got a mini journal. Um, in the I punched eyelets on this side here for this closure for a wrap around. The other one, I'm not sure how I'm gonna close, um, but I just thought I'd show you the possibilities out of your milk container, what you could do. Make yourself a couple of cute uh, little uh, journals. Like I said, you could use this to make tags or anything else, but I thought I'd uh, show you what I came up with today. Thanks for watching. As usual, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, also hit the notifications so then you know uh, when I've got something out new. I try and do something once a week. Sometimes I get there, sometimes I don't. But if you hit that uh, notification bell, you'll catch me every time. Um, for this and any other product I've done, don't forget to hit my Etsy store, Heart Desire by Venus. And I will catch you again soon with another idea. Thanks for coming out.